right. And then, wow, <laughs> listen to you getting jiggy with it, with your, uh, your dominant sevenths. <laughs> yeah. I like blues. I like blues. I do too. Cool. All right. Hey, look, we're doing another live blues guitar workshop for you guys. I'm Dan Denley, founder of guitarzoom.com. This is my good friend, Steve Stein. Hello. Hello, governor. <laughs> a spot of tea Hello, for you. Governor. A spot of tea. <laughs> I'm having my spot of tea. I already had I'm some tea drinker. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, guys, another blues guitar workshop. Thank you for being here. Always a pleasure. Always a privilege. Um, hey, do us uh, do us a favor when you guys are kind of coming in here and getting settled. Tell us where you're from. Stephen always love to see that. We have people from literally all over the world, which just continues to fascinate me that there are just people all over the world at whatever time zone you know to tune in tune in damn how old am i <laughs> <laughs> turn the old radio dial <laughs> uh today guys we're gonna be doing something pretty cool i think you're gonna like it it's basically distinguishing um the difference between straight and shuffle rhythm or swing rhythm steven steve and i were just having a little conversation about the difference between swing and shuffle before we got going here uh we're going to try to explain it and uh hopefully you'll get something out of this this is something important to understand and if you want to learn the difference between straight and swing rhythm keep watching if you want to learn it even faster you might want to check out steve's new course it's called blues guitar by steve stein and it's available at guitarzoom.com steve how are you my friend i'm good how are you I'm great, man. Good. Always a pleasure to be here with you, sir. Highlight of my day. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm not just saying it. <laughs> All right, anyway, so we're gonna yeah, we're gonna talk us, about <laughs> we're gonna talk yeah. about swing and and straight rhythm, and uh, again, it, it's it's a pretty straightforward concept. But if you if you if you're new to it. Like when I would teach beginning guitar classes and things like that, and, and you would try and teach, like one of the songs I would teach would be A Horse With No Name, because it's a pretty straightforward song. And uh, a lot of times I wouldn't even mention the rhythm of the song. People would just play along, right? So I would teach them, you know, a real simple way of being able to play that song and then strumming along. And oftentimes you'd find people, they'd be strumming without even real realizing that they're playing a swing style rhythm. Mm -hmm. And um, so what, but it's important to talk about the difference between the two and it's pretty straightforward. But like I said, I'm gonna show you some tips on how to develop the, the swing or the shuffle kind of rhythm to it. So the first thing to understand is that a straight rhythm, think of it as marching. It's just one and two and three and four and one and it is absolutely even. One and two and three and four and one. This sort of thing, okay? And the majority of music that you listen to in the pop, rock, metal, country world tends to be straight, okay? It's, it, it's in the blues genre that you tend to hear more swing. And that doesn't mean you don't hear swing in, in other styles of music, because you certainly do, you know, country and country western and ragtime, like we had talked about, some things like that. Um, but swing is a little different, because if you think of swing, now I'm going to use the, the words swing and shuffle interchangeably, okay? There are subtle differences between them, especially if you're a drummer. It has to do with the beat and things like that. But in, in terms of theory, we're just looking at the swing or the shuffle. So if I use those words, understand I'm using them interchangeably. What happens is think of it as a heartbeat, right? So if you're thinking of it as, uh, OK, 
Okay, that's going to be our swing. Mm -hmm. So instead of being one and two and three and four, it's going one and two and three and four and one and two. So that middle eighth note, if you will, is closer to the next beat. One and two and three and four and one. It's not in the middle. One and two and three and four. So when you're strumming, like if we're talking about down up strumming, for instance, and I'm just going to use scratching as our example. So if I was playing straight, I'm thinking about, in my head, I'm thinking about playing, you know, even amounts on the top and the bottom of the string. So as my pick moves through, my arm creates, and if you've ever heard me talk about strumming before, you, you know what I'm talking about here, but, you know, my arm is moving like a metronome, right? So as I move, it doesn't stop. It just moves back and forth. And I'm basically moving even amounts bef uh, up on top and on the bottom of those strings. So I'm getting a straight sound with that rhythm, an even sound, if you will. Okay? When it comes to swing, there's two different ways to think about it. One is you're going to stop on the bottom for a little bit longer. So I'm still moving the even amount. But what I found is a lot of people are able to visualize this better if I, if I tell them, instead of thinking about playing the even amount on the top and the bottom, move it. So you're going to be right on top of that sixth string, and then down here, you've got more space. So you're still going to move your arm the exact same way you did before. You don't have to stop. But because there's more space on the bottom, it's going to take longer to get back up here. So if you go... It's off-center. So you wind up getting this swing feel, and you can think about it any way you want. I mean, for some people, playing the swing rhythm is very easy because they can feel this happening. But for some people, they have a hard time really being able to, to feel and distinguish the difference between the two. They can hear it, but they have a hard time feeling it. And so you really want to think about that heartbeat. Bum, 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 bum. And again, when you go to actually physically start strumming this, now we're using down up strumming as our example right now, okay? And when you do that, you're either gonna have to stop on the bottom for a little bit to create more space, or just think of strumming off center, you know, strumming from here down to, you know, here or something like that. And you're going to wind up getting that. And you want to practice, like you'll notice I'm just scratching here. I'm taking the chords out because I really want to learn to develop that rhythm, that groove, and learn to feel it. So when I'm playing and I start adding chords in between. You know, whatever it is that I would add, I can feel that rhythm happening. My arm is, again, being a metronome, and it's just keeping this beat happening the entire time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, if we break down this swing or this shuffle a little bit more, what we're going to realize is what we're actually doing is playing what's called a triplet. So we've got three beats here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And what we're doing is we're skipping the middle one. So we're getting one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. That's what's actually happening. Again, whether that helps you or not, I'm not sure, but that's, that's what the theory is behind the swing, where when we play even or we play straight, we're just playing what we call eighth notes, one and two and, or sixteenth notes, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, and again, it's easier in my mind just to think of marching, right? Mm -hmm. Just keeping it straight or, or running, right? One and two and one and two and two. It's just the same thing over and over and over. Or if all of a sudden I hurt my ankle, I'm probably doing a swing. One and two and three. <laughs> and four, right? So that's what happens. So it's just, it's getting it straight in your head. And then, again, understanding what the logic is behind it. So that's how you would approach that from the down-up strumming perspective. Now, if mm -hmm. you're strumming everything down, it's the same thing. But obviously, you've got to be more aware of the rhythm. So if you're playing one and two and three and four... Again, you can see my hand is just making a constant motion, keeping it even. If I play it as a swing or a shuffle, then I get... Okay? Which means I really do have to pause at this point, right? I have to create more space. So I've got to make sure that I feel this more on these downs to be able to create that. Okay? 
So there's lots of different ways you can hear. Some songs, some music out there, it's really sometimes hard to distinguish the swing from the straight. Sometimes the guitar might be straight, but the, 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 the rhythm section is swinging and vice versa. Like I found this and I couldn't, I can't tell you an exact example. I should have done some research before this, but I remember learning some uh, reggae music and sometimes with reggae, it feels like it's swinging, but it's really not, right? From the guitar perspective. So it might be the rhythm section that's swinging. I used to teach a lot of like Bob Marley songs and things like that. And so you have to be a little careful where when it comes to blues, you know, usually you can tell straight off because you're gonna hear. So anytime you hear that kind of rhythm, you know you're playing a swing. And that will define what you're going to do with your, with your solo or whatever it is you're doing on top of that as well. So if we were playing like, uh, you know, something like The House is Rockin', See, uh, keep your hands to yourself. Now it's doing all this stuff, and we're going to talk about this in one of the the, um, the sessions coming up here. But um, it's still straight, right? It's when you get to So what I always tell people is it's not enough to count to four. Like you can listen to any song and you're going to count to four. One, two, three, four, or three or whatever it is you're doing. It's the subdivision we call it. It's what's happening in between one, two, and three, and four. So if you start listening and you go one and two and three and you can feel this marching thing start happening, it's an even or straight feel, right? right. If you're listening and you start thinking, da, 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 da then you're going to have this swing or, or shuffle feel. Good. Hey, one of the questions is, what, how is the difference between uh, the strumming pattern uh, between shuffle or between swing and between straight? Is their strumming patterns different in terms of down and up strokes? No. No, it's, it's the way you approach the strum, right? I mean, it's like I showed you, the, the actual strum, again, the strum could be a million things, right? I could, I could strum this just like I could strum... <laughs> A song all kinds of different ways but notice when I'm playing this at the at the core of this is this rhythm which is even right mm. or if I was going now you feel a swing again you feel this bounce or this pulse right um, and so know that the, the strum is going to do all kinds of different things. So it just yeah. understand that it, it, you're always going to have to decide whether or not you to do a swing or a shuffle, whether or not you're going to pause the rhythm to create that added space, which on a down strum, you have no choice. But if you're, mm -hmm. if you're down up strumming, then you can do and create that space. Or again, in your mind, emulate in your mind that you're just strumming further down. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. So there's really not like a down, down, up, or, you know, right. I mean, any of those kinds of rhythms that you might learn if you learn a strumming pattern can be played even or, I should say, straight or, or swing. Mm -hmm. What about the tempo in terms of, is like want shuffle, or I keep saying shuffle, is swing always slow or no. is it always fast or... It can be anything. It, it can be anything. Again, because you're dealing with a triplet, you know, if you think about it, you know, you take Iron Maiden, you're playing triplets, right? But it doesn't really feel like a swing. But when the drummer mm -hmm. comes in, bump it a dump, bump, 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 it's it's a triplet feel, right? Where if we're looking for that swing feel, 
You don't bump, 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 bump. You know, think of like uh, Brian Setzer. You know, you're going to hear a lot of that swing in, in the style of music that the Stray Cats or Brian Setzer would play. But oftentimes it's, it's quite up-tempo. You know, yeah, where okay. we tend to think of swing as these old kind of blues songs like this. But they're not all like that. I mean, there's, there's certainly, you know, bluegrass can be swung. You know, there's a lot of different styles that can do that. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Da, 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 da. So what is that doing? Da, 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 da. See, it's not da, 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 da. Although there's probably a song out there that does that, right? Yeah. That's, that straightens that out, and that's okay, too, you see? So sometimes, again, sometimes depending on the song, it might be a little harder to define. And it also, you know, when you envelop that with a bass player and a rhythm guitar player, maybe, and certainly the drummer, that can manipulate how that feels. I was actually telling Dan, um, if you go back and listen to Every Rose Has Its Thorn by Poison, it's a prime example of, and I'm not knocking the band, I'm not knocking the song, but if you listen to it, it's almost like they're fighting the swing of that song throughout the song, because when the song starts and it's just acoustic guitar, you feel a swing to the rhythm of, of the guitar. And then when the drums come in, everything kind of straightens out. Mm. So, and maybe they intentionally did that. I mean, but maybe they didn't, right? Maybe it was just a feel thing. So when they're playing, they just, you know, I mean, it happens sometimes when you're playing with a band, you know, you start playing something and then the drummer comes in and everything just kind of shifts to this feel. And, you know, a, a, another non-related example of this would be when I was a kid, um, I remember learning how to play Mother by Pink Floyd. Mm -hmm. And it has all these weird time signatures in it. And it never occurred to me that it had weird time signatures because I didn't think about that in my head. Mm -hmm. I just knew the song so well from listening to it 85 million times that when I played along, I just played along. So right. I wasn't consciously aware that there were time changes happening in the song. I just played because I liked the song and I knew how it went in my head. So sometimes a lot of these things can happen very organically and you're not conscious of it, right? But if all of a sudden you start playing with a band and you're like, wow, this feels weird, something's off. It might be something like this, where maybe the, the, the groove just isn't jiving properly because somebody isn't really pushing that swing or is swinging and, and shouldn't be. Mm. You know? That was awesome. Yeah. It is subtle. I think you do have to feel it, ultimately. Yeah. I mean, some songs hit you over the head with it, no doubt about it. You know, like if you listen to The Jack by ACDC, it's that go, 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 you know. You know what I mean? If you listen right. to like... A song called Hey Baby by Ted Nugent, which is, I just love that groove. You know, it, it, it's still got that in there, but it's moving along, you know, where the drummer wouldn't have to be going... Tuk -a -tuk -a -tuk. He might just playing boom, da, boom, da, boom, da, just driving it, right? So the drums might not give you the sense that it's swinging, you know, yeah. but, you know, whatever it is, but, um, yeah. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's very subtle. Sometimes it's not, but you just have to really try and listen and see what's happening in the song. And that's, and now going back to what I originally said about, um, horse with no name, I always thought that was kind of ironic that that song horse with no name. Now, again, it's, it could be about lots of different things if you know the song. Um, but the fact that the, the rhythm is like a horse, right? A horse trotting along, it's got that kind of rhythm to it. Now, were they conscious of that when they were writing it? I don't know, maybe, you know, but I just think it's kind of neat how, you know, this horse is tromping along and your rhythm is giving that kind of horse gallop if you will or that trot you know yeah sometimes you might hear that that word also guys gallop gallop rhythm 
I've heard that a few times in my life. That's what they're talking about. Cool, man, this is good. Um, listen, guys, if you enjoyed this, I think you'll like Steve's new course. It's called Blues Guitar by Steve Stein. And it is an A to Z, everything you want to learn about blues guitar from these rhythms that we've been talking about to your uh, soloing to blues scale to how to use uh, blues licks in your solo and pretty much A to Z, everything blues guitar that you'd want to learn. It's currently available at uh, guitarzoom.com. And the course is called Blues Guitar by Steve Stein. <laughs> I love our names. <laughs> like, what should we call this? What's it about? Blues Guitar. I think we should call it Blues Guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Like, we used to have all these funny names and fancy names. Yeah, those are gone. So uh, anyway, guys, if you'd like to be notified of the next session that we do, um, just subscribe to the channel and make sure that you hit the notify button so that you can get a little notice that we're going live. We try to do these at the same time every day or when, when they're on the schedule to do. Uh, we're not perfect, so we appreciate your patience. <laughs> but just make sure you hit the notification button if you'd like to get notified. Uh, also, we if you are joining us late here, I know people aren't always on time for these things, which is totally cool. Uh, sometimes life gets in the way or you just now discovered this video or whatever. Um, don't worry. We take all of these live sessions that we do for you and we put them in a nice tidy playlist on the YouTube channel. And uh, if you go to, to the YouTube channel for Guitar Zoom, you click on playlists. There will be a playlist there called uh, Blues Guitar Workshop, which has all the previous sessions that we've done. And there are quite a few of them. And there's a few more coming up. So if you like that, go check it out. Watch all those if you'd like. And uh, hey, if, you're, if you want to get serious about blues guitar, go check out Steve's course, Blues Guitar by Steve Stein. Anything else, my friend? No, I think that's good, bud. I think it is too. Guys, thank you so much for being here. We do absolutely appreciate you. We know that you're the reason that we're able to do what we do. It's always a blessing. Thanks, Steve. Thank, thank you, you everybody. All. Take care. And Dan, I'll talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Bye.